And welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the pack event sale thingy. I want to go through all the planes first. I will cover the tanks as well. But I'm asking someone else to do it for me. And I will just be reading from what he wrote to me. To give you a little bit of an idea of what to pick. I will be ranking them in terms of easiness to play. Effectiveness to grind. And fun to play. And of course if it's worth the value. But most of these packs are actually pretty good for what they are with a couple of exceptions and i will just be going through the line as it is go through the planes first and then i'll revisit them with the tanks in due time i'll try to keep it short but you know what happens when i say that but before we get started thank you to all my patreons and to everyone looking to buy anything from this sale and you probably will be because you are here already feel free to use my link down below if you use it tomorrow you'll get my decal if you use it today you won't just yet but I'm getting confirmation that it should be there tomorrow. I'll drop a little video as well to announce that it's there. As well show you what it looks like if you haven't actually seen it already. But let's go right into the planes. And first things first, we have the Japanese Pacific Campaign Pack. Which is pretty good. 750. Very, very cheap. And you get a rank 4 premium A6 M5 Co. Which is, you guessed it. The thing that I said last time that it isn't actually there anymore. But it's going to be back. I am logged out because I already have most of these vehicles. And then you won't be able to see the price. That's why I'm doing it like this. So you get 15 days premium. 850 GE. And then you get a rank 4 premium for Japan. And Japan is kind of a chore to play. For 750 absolute no brainer. Probably the best purchase you can make in terms of the money. For Japan that is. Then we are going towards the Dora. 15 bucks Dora D13. It's slightly better than the Focke-Wolf D9 at higher altitudes. But the D9 will be better in your regular kind of gameplay. The D9 is better up until about 5.5 to 6 kilometers. Has slightly better tuned engine. Dora D13 then gets better above that altitude. But it does have boosted ailerons and another 20mm in the nose. So instead of 2 you get 3. But you do lose the MGs. Pretty decent pickup. Probably one of the better props to actually start grinding Germany with. If you are a prop nut. Definitely worth the pickup. And then we go on to the Mustang. Unfortunately it's not the D10. It's the D20. And the D20... Isn't exactly amazing. If you are a fan of Mustangs. This is probably the worst Mustang you can fly. Together with the Mustang D5. Almost identical performance. This thing is slightly different. But it's so minimal that you really won't be noticing any kind of difference there. I would skip this. The D20 is very restrictive. But if you really need a rank for premium. For USA you probably should have picked up a GE one. But there is a lot better of a pickup down there somewhere but we'll get there when we get there but this is definitely not the best pickup you can do for germany right now then we get the wyvern the wyvern is actually pretty damn good at 4.0 650 kilometers an hour on the deck which is <laughs> nothing short but absolutely stupid definitely worth the pickup for britain as well it is kind of a chore to grind it's all kind of boring in, in my opinion anyway the Wyvern is one of the most consistent grinders that you can get, especially for the British. But even in general, you get an air spawn, you get like 1200 rounds of Mark V Hispanos, and you are just absolute stupidly fast. Nothing will catch you. You are quicker than some 6.0s, which is just ridiculous to think of. Don't really bother trying to turn five people, but you, with this kind of speed, you don't have to worry about that. And I have made a couple of videos on this thing. As well as on the Dora. As well as one on this thing. I will link them all down below if I don't forget it. Otherwise let me know in the comments. And I will add it retroactively. Then we have some tanks. I'll get to that in a second. And here we have. Use a specific Pacific campaign. And this is. I think a little bit less word. And we'll go into it. And I'm not clicking the other ones. Because it all kind of speaks for itself. This one. I mean. <laughs> It's not that great. It's not like the uh, the other one. It's only a rank 2 fighter. Keep that in mind. It's not that great of a plane. It is very similar to the XP-38 that we have. Or the P-38G that's already in the game. But this thing... I don't know. I, I don't like it. I don't think it's very great. It is decent enough. It is definitely unique. Because you get a P-38 with a 37 in the nose. But I mean altogether... 
I don't think this thing is worth the pickup. You only get 850 GE and 15 days of premium. I mean, it's the same as with this thing. However, and I'll show you because I didn't, it's a rank 4 and that's the main difference. The 750 for rank 4, definitely worth it. This thing, I wouldn't pick it up. If you really like P38, be my guest. It's definitely not a bad plane, but it's not one of those purchases where I say, yeah, go for it. Absolutely amazing. And then we have the Harrier AV8A. And this one, definitely not a bad grinder, but the issue is that America has a slightly better one coming up for the same price. This thing is a little bit less consistent. It's a Harrier. If you like Harriers, be my guest. The thing is, and it's right down here, and I'll just skip the other ones. If you want to get a top tier premium for the American tree, get the F5C. It's one of the best premiums you can buy, period. Amazing performance, easy to fly. Good guns for ground pounding and for air to air. Good ground, air to ground loadout, decent air to air loadout. I mean, you only get the two AIM-9Es, but you do get flares. You are very hard to hit, and the damage model is nothing short of ridiculous. So you get a rank six for 30 bucks, and I think this is going to be one of the main sellers, main fun planes of the patch as well. If you are into jets, if you aren't really into jets, probably not the best one, and you probably should have picked something up in the GE sale that ended today. But this is an absolute no-brainer. If you have 30 bucks to shell for a premium jet, this is the thing to get. And then we have the SU-7. The SU-7 is one of those turbo grinders just like the Mirage Milan. Not the funnest to fly. You can get some rush kills in. You do get stupid good acceleration. It's 9.3 and it has the better engine that the 9.7 one has as well. I don't think it's amazing. And definitely if you have bought the SU-11 for example with the GE. I don't think this is worth a pick up. But it's definitely a brain dead grinder. You strap up some bombs. You rush in. You drop some bombs. The issue is you're probably going to get all aspect by an A-10. A-9 Elt as we say. Efficient. Sure. Fun. Eh. Not my cup of tea. It's a bit of a ground pounder. I mean it's an SU-7. Goes without saying to be honest. Is it bad? No. Is it fun? In my opinion, also no. F5C we just discussed. And then the A5C is actually pretty decent. Especially considering there really isn't much else in the Chinese tech tree. Good for air to ground. Good for air to air because you get the two magics. If you do buy this thing and you are running the missiles. Don't bother bringing the AIM-9 piece I think it is. Just you run the magics. Much better missile. It's basically a fat MiG-19. But this thing does get countermeasures. It doesn't get many of them. But it's not that extremely hot. And you should be able to fool most of the missiles. As long as they aren't short from an exact rear aspect. AIM-9L rear aspect. You probably need to dump all your flares. Other than that. A pretty consistent grinder. I don't think it's the funnest to play, but it's definitely not very bad. Consistent, very easy to use. The 23mm aren't very great, but in terms of value that you get, it's useful for both game modes. And I mean, it's a pretty consistent grinder, so I think this is worth a pick up if you are looking to get something for the Chinese tech tree. But even if you weren't, I mean, there is really nothing else to pick here. And then we arrive at the Draken. And the Draken... Is in a little bit of a sad spot right now. The Draken. It has 230mm. Without tracers. It still has the tracers in the, the preview here. But trust me. It's hard to aim. Even with tracers on. You only have the AIM-9B missiles. You don't have countermeasures. You don't have RWR. You are at 9.7. And you are going to be running into the SU-25. Almost every game. And trust me. This is not fun to fly in the current meta. You're not very good at getting quick kills. You're not very good at strapping bombs on your plane. And just running in and killing a base or two. This thing is an air superiority fighter. But unfortunately it's not exactly stellar at that thing. At that job either. I would skip it. I hope you bought the Saab 105 UI last patch. Or last rotation of the sale. I mean there's not really anything else you can get for for Sweden, Sweden is also kind of an L to grind in general. Because really there's only the Vingen at the end. And maybe some of the J29s if you like that kind of stuff. If the J29 is in here, which I didn't actually check if it is. And it isn't, that's unfortunate. Then, I mean, if you need something for Sweden, you're kind of stuck with this. But be advised, it's not good. It's not meta. And it's definitely very frustrating. And the main thing is here, 
you can't get quick kills because of the limited amount of missiles or at least the limited the type of missile is kind of limited your guns aren't very good they're very hard to aim and then the the fuselage and the airframe are not very compliant to what you want to do sure it turns very well and is very fast on paper this is one of the best planes at the br in practice however it just ends up not really working so do with that info what you want it's good if you don't run into the l aspect bullshit but unfortunately for now that's going to be every game because the su25 is still 9.7 for god knows what reason if you want to pick it up be my guest but i don't think it's a very good pickup t1 i mean definitely better stuff out there it's not horrible but i would skip it maybe for ground i'll be i don't know i'm i don't think this is very great if you think it's unique if you like it if you like the tu2s and stuff maybe pick it up but i mean does this scream, yes, I won this? I wouldn't say so. But yeah, do what, that in, what you will. It's uh, it's a heavy fighter, not much to say about it. If you like that kind of playstyle, I mean, it's good at what it's good at. If oh, Wow, that's very helpful, isn't it? It's good at the, the ground pounding role. If you like that kind of stuff, feel free to pick it up. But in general, I don't think it's worth 17 and a half bucks for a plane that's not that special. Of course, it's a unique vehicle. But in reality, it plays the exact same as something like a TU-2, which is on paper also better. Now, sure, you don't have the NS-45s and the 23s, but does it really matter? That's going to be trade-off that you have to make, not something I can make for you. Not horrible, but there's better stuff in the tech tree, in my opinion, anyway. And then we have the Spitfire. I mean, it's an LF Mark IX. It's an exact carbon copy of the American Premium, if you have it. Or the British one in the tech tree. The LF Mark IX at 5.7. It does get a pretty cool skin. And it's probably one of the better props you can buy for the Israeli tech tree. It is definitely very solid. And it's also definitely better than some of the other planes that you can pick right there. Like, uh, well, you'll see it right there. Oh, it's not. No, wait. No, 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 no. I'm lying. I'm terribly sorry. It's the A4E. So you don't really have any choice here. Do you want the A4E or the Spitfire? Well, it depends if you like props or if you like jets. Of course, you have to pay double for this. The good thing is you only have to buy this thing and then you're done for the entire tech tree. It's definitely a capable ground pounder. And you do get flares and stuff, but you don't get the air spawn and aero B anymore. And that means that you're not going to be that competent even at the start of the match. If you want to fly this thing as an air superiority fighter, like you used to be able to quite handily, it's not really going to work out. It's a pretty good ground pounder. So if you are looking for that kind of gameplay. It's decent at that. And at least you have flares. So you will be untouched by most of the all aspect missiles. As long as they aren't fired from very close proximity from the rear. But I mean in that position you're probably going to die anyway. Because this plane isn't exactly very stellar. When it comes to dogfighting. Worth a pick up. I think so. But it's also you're talking to the guy that would buy something because he just can't be fucked grinding the same vehicle over and over with these shitty ass planes that you have in the Israeli tech tree. Going through the lower ranks in Israel is absolutely horrible. It's absolutely appalling. But you have to do it. So if you want to skip that, definitely good. But you also don't have any other options. So you probably already bought this thing if you're looking for that kind of thing anyway. So let's go on to the next vehicle. And it's the MiG-21 SPSK. Now again here it's the same deal. There is not really something else to pick. But I don't think this is very good. It's not exactly stellar. It does get decent missiles. You get the R-60s. Which can be pretty potent. But if you want to bring countermeasures. You have to drop the gun. So it looks like here it has countermeasures. And it has a gun. You have to choose one or the other. You cannot pick both. So you are either going to eat missiles every match. And die with one or two kills. At very most. Because you. Well. You just die to an all aspect missile. Or you bring the flares. And then if someone flares one or two of your missiles. You're out of ammo. And then you have to RTB. Do that in for what you want. Not very enjoyable to play. But it's definitely a consistent grinder. Considering the R60s are pretty potent. And if you run into something without flares. I mean. <laughs> what the fuck is he going to do about it. So you just get on someone 6. You shoot the missile and you get a kill. I would personally still run it with a gun. Mainly. 
because I don't like flying around with a dick in my hand. If I have to rely solely on missiles, it's an extremely frustrating experience, in my opinion, anyway. If you like that kind of stuff, be my guest. But it's not like the A5C, where you have a well, mediocre gun, but the gun works. You have very good missiles, and you still have countermeasures on top of it. Keep in mind, it's basically a PFM airframe, the MiG-21 PFM. It's not that great. But hey, consistent grind, sure, is it very fun? Depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for consistent grinding, then it's probably fun. It's not very good in dogfights and stuff. So I wouldn't get it for that kind of uh, gameplay if you are looking for that. It's not a MiG-21 in a traditional sense because, well, it has other limitations. But none of the real benefits that you would get from something like the MF or the SMT. And then we arrive at the Vautour and the Milan. Now you might think, well... The Vautour is definitely trash, and the Milan is not. Well, they're both kind of ass, to be honest, but if you have to buy any, please, for the love of God, skip the Vautour to end. This thing... I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say it. This thing, it doesn't have flares. It doesn't have missiles. It has a decent bomb load, but... So does this. The Milan is simply a much better pick. Sure, for air-to-air -air combat, this thing is still rather terrible. However, with the bomb load, and you fly this thing kind of like the SU-7, then sure, you can get some consistent grinding out of it. It's not exactly fun, but you're going to have a lot more fun flying this over the Vautour. And this thing does the Vautour job better than the Vautour. And you might think 9.0, maybe I'll get down tiered 9.0. Almost every match is 9.7. And why is that? Because planes like this, planes like the SU-25s are going to be spammed every game. And you are going to be pulled into their matchmaker. It's not the other way around. You're going to be stuck flying with them for a while now. Especially after these sales. And there's another sale coming out in uh, around Christmas time, I believe. So expect it to happen again. So you keep getting sucked up into, into 9.7. This thing is just a lot more versatile. And for 5... For five bucks extra, well, guess what? You get a rank six instead of a rank five. So that's in itself already worth it. It's not a great plane. It's not an enjoyable experience. And I I know it pains me a lot to say this, but it's probably the best grinder, or at least the best jet grinder that you can get in the French tech tree. It's, it's quite painful. And if you have seen my Milan video, I absolutely despise it. But this thing, I will take it any day of the week over the other Vautour that we have in the game right now. And then we arrive at the A-10. And I'll open up the lightning in the background. The A-10, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The F-5C, in my opinion, is a much better pick. It's much better in Araby. It's much better at like having fun. And the A-10, it's the A-10. So if you are a bit of an A-10 simp like I am, then you will probably get this thing. It's great for ground pounding. But keep in mind, if you are buying this thing to ground pound in Araby, very often you're going to be picked off before you even reach the battlefield. Or the game is going to be over before you reach the battlefield. Sure, the A9Ls are crazy good at, at now 10.0 actually. It's not 9.7 anymore. Still very, very good missiles. But I don't think this is worth the pickup considering the F5C is right there for the same price. And it's a lot more versatile. However, this thing is definitely a lot more brain dead. Because you got the two A9Ls. You got the, the Gawade Avenger with infinite amount of ammo. And a very good stopping power for both air and ground. Um, it's more of a mean plane, really. In ground up B, if you only play ground up B... This thing might be better for you than the F5C. But if you fly a little bit of boat. And if you are grinding planes primarily. Then flying the F5C in air B is probably going to net you a lot more RP in the long run. Because if you get like one or two kills in air. And it's equivalent of like 15 to 20 ground kills. So really. If you are going to be a fighter jockey. Fly the F5C over the A10. It's not a bad plane this by any stretch of the imagination. And I would pick this thing over the AV8. Why? Because the AV8, I think, are just kind of man. There's plenty of AVAs already in the game. There's already like five Harriers, I think. Granted, two are premium, but there's still three that you can pick up. And with the A10, I mean, if you are looking for a ground attack plane, it's pretty damn decent. The Mavericks are good. You can outrange most of the AA that you run into. And of course, the gun is fantastic for uh, and for anti-ground. 
and then we reach the lightning now the lightning is also one of those planes it's at 9.3 which is i think under beyond it has two red tops it has a lot of rocket pulse as you can see on the wingtips right there is this thing fun to fly however definitely not 9.3 almost every game is 9.7 almost every game actually is 10.3 and this thing at 10.3 is absolutely useless this thing does not get ccip so you have to manually aim the rocket pulse and trust me it's an absolute chore to do if you like lightnings be my guest but i think that the wyvern even though it's a much lower br you can grind all the way up until rank 5 and then you can maybe talisman something at the end of rank 5. I don't think this thing is very good. I don't think it's very fun. And I don't think you can even really go for bombing bases in it. Sure you can. You can use the rocket pods. You have some bombs. But I wouldn't recommend it. If you like this, be my guest. But you can see the score here. It's even lower than a Milan. Just let that sink in for a second. Let me pick a plane that's absolutely appallingly bad. Which is the Milan. And compare it to something that we know is pretty shit in general it's something like the d5 is pretty bad and then we'll pick a decent vehicle like the f5c and you'll see 2.6 for the milan which is pretty pretty shitty it looks like three stars but that's guides in playing tricks on you then we have the mustang this is high, very highly rated i have no idea this thing is lower rated than the p51 now this kind of backfired on me didn't it but look at this this is probably the lowest b rating that you can find here I would definitely skip it if you are a fan of this kind of stuff i mean be my guest but don't say i didn't warn you don't say i sold you this shit so that i can uh, get something from the link that you're using down below i'm not trying to do that i'm trying to give you an informed decision and this thing just ain't it and that's all of the planes for now let's go and look at the tanks i'm gonna categorize it into three brackets today we have the low risk purchases which are good tanks easy to play very easy to get most out of them after you've bought them then we got the medium risk bracket packs that are basically just as good but they might be a little bit harder to play maybe a slightly higher skill cap maybe a little bit more unforgiving of a br and then we have the quote-unquote high risk tanks which are good tanks mostly good tanks but they can be kind of potentially unforgiving depending on the br it might not be the easiest to play if you are very new to the game might not be the best purchase for you but i will be going through all of them one by one and we are going to be starting off with the low risk bracket and we are going to start off with the t55 am1 very good at 8.3 very well rounded it can kill tanks that can easily kill it but it's also very strong in the down tiers and pretty decent in the up tiers. You got the good selection selection of ammo, APHE and DART as well as ATGMs. Which of course makes this thing very much diverse to play. One of the better pickups in general for tanks. But I can't really go too in depth into them. I'm simply reading what one of my tanker buddies has actually sent me. Rank 6. So if you buy this thing you can basically grind out the entire nation. Which is of course exactly what you want. Next up the Soma SM. And this is the tank that I've actually played myself. Fantastic gun. A little bit mediocre armor. It's a little bit of a heavy tank destroyer. Just like the AMX 50. It's only tier 4. But this tank is some of the most fun I've had in tanks in general. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Very good tank. It's only 20 bucks. I say only it's still a lot of money for a tier 4. But I think this thing is extremely fun to play. And you can see by the rating. Most people seem to agree. And then next up we have the King Tiger HSLA. It's a Tiger 2. Not much to say about it. Very solid vehicle. Very good armor. It's no longer the bullshit tank that it was a million years ago. But hey. It's pretty good. It's pretty strong. It does get fucked by heat however. And it's the same thing as with the next vehicle on the list. Do keep in mind this thing is only rank 4 as well. So you are shelling out 20 bucks for a rank 4. Do with that information what you want. One of the first tanks I played in this game. King Tigers of course. Very much iconic. Not very hard to play. It is very good. But your teammates are probably going to say it's bad. And they're going to. Well. Play it as bad as they say it is. But in general. Very well rated. 
I can't, of course. Well, I do have it, but I'm not logged in. Because if I do that, then you won't be able to see the prices. Because I have most of the vehicles I'm actually going through right now. Next up, we have the IS-6. Very much similar to the King Tiger that we just went through. Very solid. Very agile. The gun handling isn't as great. And the reload isn't amazing. But, I mean, the gun is good. It has decent pen. The post pen is ridiculous. And, of course, it's very well armored. But, again... Is it the best purchase? It's only rank 4. But it's one of those tanks that is extremely powerful until you run into anyone with heat. And then you just kind of get laughed at. But in general, pretty solid tank. It's basically a medium tank with the armor of a heavy. So yeah, it's not as ridiculous as it was on release. Just a little bit like with the King Tiger. But still definitely a very nice pickup. And then we have the AVRE. I mean, <laughs> do I really have to say anything? It's a big Lamau tank. Is it that great? I mean, I've seen people do well in it. He recommends it. Is it the best? I don't know. It's a bit of a dope machine. It's 25 bucks. It is rank 5. Do you think it's worth it? I think if you like mean vehicles and you like the British Tech Tree, you are going to be completely fine with this. It's a very low risk investment in that sense because you will know exactly what you're getting into and the 183 hash shell just blows up everything you touch. It is rank 5 and you do get a camel with it. But I mean... This, I think, is very much up for debate if you like it or not. I think I would like it. I've seen people enjoy it, but I've also mostly... Everyone I've seen play this thing was also good at the game. So that might have something to do with it. I'm not going to tell you to buy it. I'm not going to say don't buy it. I'm not entirely sure. He does recommend it, but I think it's more in the sense that it's a, a big Omega LOL vehicle that can shoot bombs at people. Next up, we have the Term... Three. It's a glass cannon, coax 30mm, annihilate basically anything with not medium to heavy armor. Do keep in mind, it has no survivability, it has no armor. The firepower of course is great, and the mobility is pretty good. It's a light tank, if you don't mind that kind of gameplay, it's definitely a good pickup. But keep in mind, it is good, but it might not be the most noob friendly. Last up, the M51. Very solid, but for 10 bucks more, you good. You do have the Makava 2D, which is just a higher BR, higher tier, much more to grind with it. This is only a rank 4 yet again. The gun is good. The post pen damage, however, is. You're either gonna one shot someone or they're gonna survive 20 shots. There is no in between, unfortunately. The gun is a little bit bipolar. Sometimes it works extremely well, and sometimes it does absolute dick all. Which of course is not something you want to rely on. But keep in mind for only 10 bucks more you do get a much higher BR vehicle. That is still pretty damn decent. So let's go into the medium risk bracket now. First up we have the Object 120. Absolute stupid firepower for its BR. It's a very campy tank. Very little survivability. If you like slow playing sniping gameplay. This is definitely the tank for you. It is rank 5. Pretty decent. In that regard, it is very susceptible to planes, however, and you are going to find yourself strafed a lot probably. Because people don't like getting shot across the map and the barrel is so big, you basically are waving a flag saying, I am here. So if you like the kind of snipey gameplay, this is an absolutely ridiculous gun. But it's not exactly... But it is kind of brain dead to play, but it's not very forgiving. Other than the fact that if you click on someone, they are likely just going to explode. Next up, we have the Roycat 105. It has thermals at 8.7, DM33, and the only risk really is that it's super fragile. It should probably go in the uh, low risk bracket, the first bracket, because really if you can deal with the lack of survivability, this thing is absolutely stupid. Basically no risk if you know somewhat what you are doing. Next up is the Type 74. The best version of this tank that we have in the game. And of course it's a premium. The only real risk is you can run into 10.0 sometimes. And you're not going to have a very fun experience in there. But other than that it's a very solid grinding tank. And it's very similar to the Leopard 1A5 if you have played it. Keep in mind however these up tiers depending on how the matchmaker is going to pan out. When the, uh, the sales come out. It might suck for a little bit. Because everyone is going to be spamming some 10.0 tank or some... You know, you know how it works. Sometimes the, the matchmaker gets a little bit upset. And he says, fuck you. 
and then you get 20 10.0 games in a row. In general, pretty decent grinding tank, but nudge your expectations. It's not always going to be very stellar. Next up, we have the AMX 30 Super. The best AMX 30 in the game. Wow, cool. I know, right? It's the exact same deal as with the Type 74. Premium one being the better version. Not sure if I'm a very big fan of that. Also very similar to the Leopard 1 in 5, but more mobility, less armor, and more post damage when you get hit. So if you get penned in the hull, I mean, in reality, very often the shell is just going to fly straight through you. Basically the same deal as with the Type 74 there. If you get up tiered a lot, you're not going to have a good time. If it doesn't happen, it's a pretty decent tank. But I mean, that goes for basically every tank or every vehicle in this game. This thing is tier 6, however. So you are going to have a pretty decent time grinding out the entire nation. I would still recommend the Soma over this thing. But if you like higher tier stuff, it's only 5 bucks cheaper, I think. Or 10 bucks. It's a bit of a trade-off. If you like this kind of gameplay, it's uh, like a little bit of a medium light tank. It's almost, he says it's almost, almost a very good light tank. Or it's a very good almost light tank. So it's a little bit in between medium and light. If that appeals to you, then feel free to pick it up. Next up, we have the CV90105. This thing was absolutely busted on release, but now it's 9.7. And the only real downside is the fact that it lacks a lot of armor. If you can make good use of the reload, if you could get in a good position and start slinging these shells out, it's a very good tank, very strong. Just keep in mind to avoid basically everything. Planes, IFVs, helis, AA, and probably even pistols and MG rounds are going to go straight to your tank. It is very much not a survivable vehicle. But if you get in a good position and you can start machine gunning, and I mean that with the main gun, this thing is very strong. Keep in mind, it's not very noob friendly because if someone looks at you wrong, you have a chance of simply just exploding. And then last up, we have the Makava 2D. A very competitive tank. It is a little bit slow compared to the typical T6 MBT, but it has decent survivability. And But you will, of course, die when you get hit badly, but you can take some shots. And that means a lot. If you're prone to being shot a lot, if you're not very good at the game, this thing might be slightly better for you. You might have a, you know, it might be pretty good if you're new, but it's still going to be in this bracket here because it is slow. And if you play it wrong, you're just going to very slowly drive into enemy gunfire because you are going to be late to the party. Everyone will be set up. And if you then just drive through the street, you're probably going to get shot right up the ass or even just to the side because you're not really going to be looking around. So it's a competitive tank, not the easiest to play, but definitely not a bad pickup. And then for the last bracket, the quote unquote high risk, great tanks, but potentially unforgiving due to the BRs that they have. We have the Leopard 2A4. Well, it's a Leopard 2A4. What's there to say? It's some camo netting. You're basically paying 30 bucks for premium. And camo netting is already in the game. It's very strong. Probably one of the more slightly more survivable tanks at this BR range for the premiums. But that's really not saying much considering the, BR, the, the planes that are coming up. The lower BR tier 6 premiums might be more worth and probably more fun to play, but it's still very good and it can be used in the top tier lineups. And you're probably going to run into 11.0 almost every match anyway, so you might as well. But, I mean, I wasn't a fan of this thing. Definitely not easy to play, but if you like to just bash your head into a wall, then, well, I guess you can be my guest. It is good. It can be used at top tier. Is it great? And that's going to be up to you to decide. I think if you don't have any top tier tanks, it's not going to be great buy, which that goes for most of these. But that's going to be up to you. It's still definitely capable, but you need to extract that performance all on your own. So it's going to be a little bit up to you. A little bit of a skill if you, if you will. Next up, we have the XM1. The mobility on this thing is nuts. It's absolutely great. The armor is kind of... Bleh is kind of the opposite of how mobile it is. It does kind of go in tandem, of course. Meh armor, less weight, more maneuverability, more mobility in general. And the gun is kind of average. Overall, pretty decent tank. And the US doesn't really have much around this BR. It's probably going to be your best bet. But 10.3 up tiers are going to be pretty rough if you're not going to be very careful. And it's pretty easy to just 
flank around all around the map, shoot people in the side. But keep in mind, the gun isn't very good. If you run into people face first and they actually noticed you, you get scouted by an IRV, for example, you're probably not going to have a great time. But it's one of the faster US tanks in the entire game. Not very easy to play. I would myself compare it a little bit to something like an M18, for example. Next up, we have the T-72 Terms. It's a glue-eating machine. Great gun, good thermals, good armor, favorable BR, all around a very solid premium. But it has the same issues as the other T-72s, and that's the armor is only good at the front. And the reverse speed is absolutely dog shit, as well as the depression. You do. He recommends the uh, 55 AM1, because it's much more easy to play that BR, and you're not going to be getting much up if you die constantly keep in mind if you get shot at the side or in your lower plate the ammo of this thing is just gonna cook off and just gonna blow up it's a very good sniping backup at higher tier it is a good vehicle for its br if you are a better player it's pretty good it's a pretty hand holdy tank but it's also gonna be pretty unforgivable if you are a complete brainlet so if you are like a level 10 don't recommend this. Get the T55. If you know what you're doing somewhat, you're probably going to be fine with the T72 AV terms. Next up is the Type 96. It's the same as above, really. Just even worse side armor. And an absolutely massive lower front plate, as you can see right there. And it's the same deal as with the T72. If you get shot down there, um, you're not going to have a very good time. So... It's a pretty decent grinder, but have you seen the other stuff you can buy here? There is much better picks, but of course, if you want to grind China, I mean, you're probably kind of out of luck. There is really not that much to pick from. And then we have the Challenger DS. First of all, imagine grinding British vehicles. You're not going to have a, the best time in this thing. And considering the Roycat is already in the game... A premium that you can just buy with a better, roughly a better lineup. And around the, the teals as well. They're just much better vehicles around there. Whereas this thing is your first step towards big sadness. So do you really want this thing? If you really want the Challenger, it has an okay gun. The handling is pretty good. But the armor outside of the upper front plate is kind of... Ugh. So... I mean, that's really not much to say. I think the Roycat is going to be a much better pick. So does the guy I'm requesting the reviews for. And I do trust him, his opinion. And he does like the, the British tanks. But he's not, uh, he's not recommending you this one for some reason. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. If there is going to be a video tomorrow for the decal, then you will know that you will get one. Unfortunately, you will not get one retroactively because that's just the way Gaijin operates. So I'll see you all tomorrow with the update video. And otherwise, it's going to be Wednesday with more gameplay as per usual. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you then.